Hey guys, welcome to the review and results show for the March 30th, 2023 edition of Ring of Honor Wrestling. My name is Dan, I review each and every AEW and ROH show. That's everything from Dark Elevation to shows like this. So if you missed the show and you want a quick recap, or you just want to basically talk all things AEW and ROH, you can do so right here. So please go right below this video, click that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. Because I always let you see past, present, and future reviews that I do. But also helps others to find my channel. And without any further ado, let's get to the review. Ring of Honor Wrestling begins with Ari Davari and Tony Nese teaming up against Ozzy Open. And I gotta say this. The more and more I see Ozzy Open wrestle, the more they're becoming my favorite tag team in wrestling today. And I don't think I'm alone in this because I swear every single time their entrance hits, it gets louder and louder each and every time. And I feel like one day they might be the most popular tag team in wrestling. But uh, as for now, and as with this match, they did a great job at fighting from behind with Tony and, uh, and uh, Ari Davari, uh, being real good at taking shortcuts which is something that Smart Mark Sterling helped to create with his distractions. They even did a great job at selling me on Ari and Tony, winning after an assisted cutter and a 450 splash from Tony Nese that looked so damn good. But Kyle was able to kick out, then Ozzy Open uh, made Smart Mark pay with a double super kick along with finishing off Tony Nese with the Coriolis. I... I I swear I keep on saying that wrong, but that finisher looks so damn cool. Following that, it's Miyu Yamashita taking on Shaza McKenzie. And it's so cool seeing both of them wrestle in Ring of Honor, given how great they both are. Shaza has a beautiful Northern Light suplex, along with making everything look like it hurts. Uh, that's something Miyu does as well. And that's something, it's just so great. It's one of my favorite parts of professional wrestling when I can truly believe what's going on. It makes all the matches just so much more fun. Uh, there was even a point where Shaza had Miyu tied up in the ropes and just kept kicking her over and over again in the chest. Just brutal stuff. But Miyu was able to come back and nearly kick Shaza's head off for the win. Up next, it's Trio's action with the Embassy facing off against JD Griffey, Dak Draper, and Arjun Singh. This match was never really in doubt for the Embassy, but it was nice to see Griffey get some time to show what he can do. I do hope that we can see more from him in the future. I really do feel like the sky is the limit for him. I feel like maybe, just maybe, he can be a star, maybe even a world champion one day. But uh, we're getting a bit too ahead of ourselves here. As, uh, as I said, uh, this was pretty much dominated by the Embassy from start to finish. And it would end with Brian Cage suplexing Arjun Singh up and over the top rope into the ring while standing on the middle rope to get the win. After that, it's Metal League and AR Fox teaming up against the Infantry. And this started off great with Metal League really showing how great his balance was. By the way, he was walking all over those ropes. I'm always so impressed uh, whenever he, I do see him do that. Uh, there was a scary spot, though, in the match where it looked like Sean Dean was dropped on his head. I legit cringed at it. Uh, it was really hard to watch. It did look like he was okay, though, since he was able to finish the match. But definitely hope he's all right in the long term after something like that. Uh, they were also able to be very dominant after that, which was uh, pretty fun given what happened. But despite that, it was not enough to contain Air Fox. His incredible hot tag along with Metal League's uh, aerial ability as Metal League gets the win with a diving elbow from the top rope after a jumping Spanish fly from AR Fox. Then we got Athena defending her ROH Women's World Championship against Emi Sakura, and there was a lot of intensity from both of these women going into this match, and it's really hard to make heel versus heel work on paper. It shouldn't. But both Emmy and Athena are just so damn good at what they do. They really did have the crowd hanging on everything that they did. The spot where Emmy did her body splash while Athena was laying against the ring steps was great. Uh, Athena beating the hell out of Emmy uh, all over the ring was great as well. Emmy holding up Athena in that double underhook was just wow. It, it really seemed like she had her up there for just ever. Uh, it got a, this, this awesome chance that were very, very much deserved here. And this was a ton of fun. But it is Athena who wins with the cross face. And after the match, Athena would continue to go right after her. But after weeks and weeks of being out, it's Yuka Sakazaki out to make the save. 
jumping on her as uh, she's trying to get away. Holds up the ROH Women's World Championship. The match is official for Supercard of Honor. It's Athena defending the ROH Women's World Championship against Yuka Sakazaki. And I'm very curious to see if y Yuka Sakazaki, excuse me, could pull it off. Following that, it's Rouge and Jurelis to go teaming up with the Kingdom to take on Top Flight and the Lucha Brothers. Listen, I know what I said earlier about Aussie Open. Possibly be the best tag team in the world one day. And I do believe that. But right now, I feel like that title belongs to the Lucha Bros. And that's no disrespect to any other tag team uh, in the industry today. But that pop they got and they always get is just freaking massive. Uh, this match was explosive and it all started with a smack to the face as Matt Taven mocked Penta by taking off his glove and just smacking him, challenging him to a duel right there in the middle of the ring. Uh, this would go back and forth with the heel teams uh, really being in control throughout most of it. The face team would do the best that they could, but as we all know, when you mess with the bull, you get the horns. And that's exactly what happened to Darius as Roosh would get the win for his team. We would then get a huge treat and get to hear from Mark Briscoe. And he says that this match against Samoa Joe is the biggest in his career. And he's not only going to win this for his entire family, but for Jay's entire family as well. And of course, Samoa Joe does respond on the Tron and says that he's going to remind Mark at Supercard of Honor just how dangerous he can be. And then immediately after, we go backstage and see Jay Lethal standing with Dasha. And he says that this is not about his entourage, but it's about his history with Mark Briscoe. And he has to tell him something. And surely enough, Mark comes up and he has nothing but positive words to say to Mark Briscoe. And says that given their history, given everything that they've been through, tells him to bring home that championship regardless of whether this means a change for Jay Lethal uh, maybe going face uh, I think Mark Briscoe winning the title at Supercard of Honor given everything that has happened him winning the title at Supercard of Honor from Samoa Joe might be the biggest slam dunk in pro wrestling history back to the ring now it is Wheeler Yuta defending his newly redesigned ROH Pure Championship against Leon Ruffin and regardless of what commentary said I absolutely love this new aggressive side from Wheeler along with the rest of the BCC it adds that extra layer to not only his character but what he does in the ring as well he can be such a great wrestler but also be very brutal at the same time and that was on full display throughout this match with Leon not really being able to do too much outside of being elusive at one point and giving Wheeler one hell of a drop kick it is Wheeler Yuta here who uh, gets Leon to tap out with a hammerlock crossface. It looked brutal after the match, though. He would run everybody down that he's beaten. But as soon as he mentions Shibata's name, here he comes to confront him in the middle of the ring. Wheeler would then try to talk some more uh, trash to Shibata, but he was having none of it. Throws the microphone away. This match Oh my god, should be a ton of fun. After that, it's Blake Christian going one-on-one -on -one with El Hijo del Vikingo. And first off, I was already ecstatic that we were going to see Vikingo at Supercard of Honor. But now you're telling me we get to see him on an episode of Ring of Honor against Blake Christian? Oh uh, yes, please. And give me seconds, please. This crowd felt the absolute same way I did, it seemed like, because it really seemed to know that this was match was going to happen before it did because as soon as his music hit and his uh, his name appeared on the Tron oh man did they go nuts and as far as this match was concerned these uh, their two styles rather are so damn similar but so unique at the same time so of course they were going to have a great match of course they were going to do things like a standing shooting star press or a springboard hurricane rana or a standing spanish fly one of them where they both landed on their freaking feet and a springboard front flip, which was explained much more eloquently by Caprice. So props to him on that. Uh, this match was a blast from start to finish. But it's Vikingo getting the win here with a Huracan Rana driver. After the match, Blake is uh, in a backstage interview and gets confronted by Prince Nana. Prince Nana tells him maybe he should just stay away for the next one. But after... Uh, Blake Christian denies that because he is all heart after all. The rest of the embassy would blindside him and just beat him down. It's main event time with Eddie Kingston going against a former ROH World Heavyweight Championship and Christopher Daniels. And this match, I believe, was so important because I felt like 
Eddie needed to remind people just how good he is in the ring. It's very easy to forget how good he is given how great he is on the, on the mic because he certainly is great and that's something that can overshadow other things. And of course, Christopher Daniels is absolutely a perfect dance partner to help him achieve that and make this match be so much better with the seamlessly switching between just chopping the hell out of each other and going straight up wrestling moves. Uh, with that said, it is Eddie Kingston who gets the win with two back fists uh, after the match. Claudio would come down to the ring and confront Eddie, and Eddie being Eddie, he was ready to fight right then and there and uh, wrestle him for the title right now. But uh, just as it looked like it was going to happen, Claudio would pick up his clothes and take his title and start walking up the ramp. Eddie would then call Claudio an upside down diamond and says that he can't concentrate on anything else until he wins that ROH World Championship. Like we heard before, he said that is his destiny. This should be great. I legit have no clue where they're going to go with this match, but I can't wait to see it. That was Ring of Honor Wrestling. What'd you guys think about it? Please let me know down in the comment section below. Top to bottom, this did a great job of building every single match at Super Card of Honor. But if I really had to pick my favorite match, my favorite moment, certainly Blake Christian versus Vikingo easily tops that. But uh, with that being said, if you did enjoy this review, please go right below this video, click that like button, that subscribe button, and the notification bell, because then we'll let you see past, present, and future reviews that I do, but also helps others to find my channel. So thank you guys once again for checking out this review, and thank you guys for being all elites.